All right, history nerds, buckle up. We're about to embark on a fascinating journey through time. We're diving into the wild ride that is Estonia's economic journey. First stop, medieval Tallinn. Imagine a city that's a bustling hub of activity, where every corner tells a story of trade, culture, and resilience. Picture this, cobblestone streets, merchants hawking their wares, and enough beer to drown a Viking. The air is filled with the sounds of haggling, the clinking of coins, and the occasional cheer from a nearby tavern. Estonia, you see, was a trading powerhouse. Its strategic location made it a vital link in the chain of medieval commerce. Right smack dab in the middle of the action, perfectly positioned between east and west. This prime location allowed Estonia to flourish as a key player in the trade networks that spanned Europe and beyond, and the hottest club in town, the Hanseatic League. This was no ordinary club. It was an economic powerhouse, a coalition of merchant guilds and market towns that dominated trade in the Baltic and North Sea. Think of it as the Amazon Prime of its day, a network of cities dominating trade in the Baltic Sea. Goods flowed seamlessly, and Tallinn was right at the heart of it all. Estonia, specifically Tallinn, was raking it in. The city was a melting pot of cultures, ideas, and goods with merchants from all over Europe converging to trade. They had furs, timber, and fish, all the essentials for a good time in the 13th century. Life was good, these commodities were highly sought after, and Tallinn's markets were always bustling with activity. Well, as good as it could be when your neighbors were constantly trying to conquer you. The city's wealth and strategic importance made it a target for various powers, leading to a tumultuous history of sieges and battles. Which brings us to our next point, the resilience of Estonia's economy. Despite the constant threats and invasions, the people of Tallinn managed to adapt and thrive. They rebuilt their city time and again, each time stronger and more prosperous than before. This spirit of resilience is a testament to the enduring strength of Estonia's economic foundations. So, stay tuned as we explore how this medieval trading powerhouse evolved into the modern tech-savvy nation we know today. The good times in Tallinn couldn't last forever. This is history, people, not a Disney movie. Enter stage left the Danes. Yep, those pastry-loving folks had a thing for conquest. They swooped in and took control of northern Estonia. But hold on, Sweden wasn't about to be left out of the party. They snagged the south. Estonia became the wishbone in a geopolitical tug of war. So, how'd this impact the economy? Imagine trying to run a business when the rules keep changing and the king wants a cut of your profits. Not ideal, right? Fast forward to the 18th century and things got really spicy. The Great Northern War erupted. It was basically the Avengers Endgame of its time, with all the major powers duking it out. Estonia? Stuck right in the middle of the mosh pit. Spoiler alert, Russia wins. Estonia became part of the Russian Empire, and you know what they say about empires, right? They love taxes. But hey, at least the war was over. For now. The 19th century rolled around and the Industrial Revolution was in full swing. Estonia, however, wasn't exactly leading the charge. They were more like that friend who shows up to the party late, a little awkward, but with a charmingly rustic sweater. Sure, they built some factories mainly focused on textiles and food processing, but they also held on to their agricultural roots. Think of it as a balanced breakfast, a little bit of industry, a side of farming, and a whole lot of hoping Russia wouldn't notice them too much. Section 5. A Taste of Freedom, Independence, and Interwar Prosperity Remember that whole hoping Russia wouldn't notice them thing? Well, it didn't quite work out. Russia had a little revolution thing in 1917. And in the chaos, Estonia saw its chance. They declared independence in 1918. Finally, after centuries of being someone else's vassal state, Estonia was calling the shots. They implemented land reforms, got their own currency, the Kroon, and even joined the League of Nations. For a brief shining moment, things were looking up. Section 6. Communism Here We Come The Soviet Era and Its Economic Benefits The Soviet Era and Its Economic Benefits This period was marked by significant changes in the economic landscape of Estonia. The Soviet Union implemented a command economy, which meant that the government controlled all aspects of economic production and distribution. Remember that whole brief shining moment thing? Yeah, about that. The initial optimism quickly faded as the realities of Soviet control set in. The transition was anything but smooth, and the Estonian people had to adapt to a new way of life. World War II came along and, well, it wasn't pretty. 
the war brought immense destruction to Estonia, leaving the country in ruins. The people faced hardships and devastation on an unprecedented scale. Estonia got caught between Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union. The strategic location of Estonia made it a battleground for these two powerful forces, leading to further suffering for the Estonian people. In the end, the Soviets liberated them, Reed occupied them. The Soviet occupation brought about significant changes, but it also meant the loss of independence for Estonia. Goodbye free market economy, hello command economy. The Soviet government took control of all economic activities, dictating what was produced, how it was produced, and where it was distributed. Estonia's farms were collectivized, factories churned out goods for the motherland, and the black market became the place to find decent toilet paper. The good news? Despite the hardships, the Estonian people found ways to adapt and survive. Estonians got really really good at coding. Why? Because computers were one of the few things the Soviets didn't completely screw up. The focus on technological advancement provided a unique opportunity for Estonians to excel in this field. Because computers were one of the few things the Soviets didn't completely screw up. The emphasis on computer technology allowed Estonians to develop skills that would later become invaluable in the post-Soviet era. This expertise in coding and technology became a silver lining in an otherwise challenging period. Section 7. Breakup to make up, Estonia goes digital and finds its groove. The 1980s rolled around and the Soviet Union was looking shakier than a one-legged stool in a hurricane. Estonia saw its chance and took it. They staged a peaceful singing revolution, belting out patriotic tunes until the Soviets finally got the hint and left. Independence. Round 2. This time Estonia wasn't messing around. They knew they had to adapt or die, economically speaking. They embraced free markets slash tariffs and went all in on technology. Section 8. Unicorns and e-residency, Estonia, the Silicon Valley of the Baltics? Remember all that coding practice Estonians got under Soviet rule? Well, it paid off. Estonia became the first country to offer e-residency, basically a digital passport that lets anyone start a business there online. They embrace the digital world like a long-lost lover. They have e-voting, e-tax filing, and even e-schooling. Heck, you can pretty much run your entire life in Estonia without ever leaving your couch. Except to get snacks. Even Estonia hasn't figured out how to e-deliver those yet. Section 9. The future is so bright, you gotta wear SPF 100 Estonia's economic outlook. So, where does Estonia stand today? This small Baltic nation has made significant strides in recent years, transforming itself into a digital powerhouse. They're a member of the EU, NATO, and the OECD, basically the cool kids' table of international organizations. Their economy is booming, showing resilience and adaptability in the face of global challenges. With a focus on IT, Estonia has become a hub for tech innovation, attracting talent from all over the world, startups, and innovation. The country has fostered a vibrant startup ecosystem, with numerous incubators and accelerators supporting new ventures. They've even earned the nickname Estonia. see what they did there? This is due to their pioneering efforts in digital governance and e-services, making life easier for citizens and businesses alike. And the best part? They did it all while maintaining a high quality of life with beautiful nature, a thriving cultural scene, and a strong sense of community. Estonia's commitment to sustainability and green living is evident in their well-preserved natural landscapes and eco-friendly initiatives, and a healthy dose of that famous Estonian pragmatism. This pragmatic approach has helped Estonia navigate economic uncertainties and emerge stronger. The future looks bright for Estonia, as they continue to innovate and grow while preserving their unique cultural heritage and natural beauty. Section 10. Lessons from the little guy what Estonia can teach the world, besides how to code. Estonia's story is a testament to resilience, adaptability, and the power of a good internet connection. They've shown the world that even a small country with a complicated history can achieve remarkable things. Their journey offers valuable lessons for everyone, from embracing innovation to the importance of digital literacy. Plus, they've proven that you can be a tech-savvy powerhouse without sacrificing your soul or your love of nature. Section 11. In conclusion, Estonia, you do you. So, there you have it folks, the epic tale of Estonia's economic journey. From medieval traders to digital pioneers, they've weathered the storms of history and come out stronger on the other side. They've shown the world that size doesn't matter. 
unless we're talking about internet speed, and that embracing change is the key to success. Keep on rocking, Estonia. The world could learn a thing or two from you.